so you want a router for your React application so you can change pages. But that doesn't necessarily mean you need a full framework like Astro or Next.js. But all you know is you have your React app and you don't want something overly complicated or something that just has way more features than you actually need, you just want something simple. So we're gonna see how we can get simple routing in our React app using Wouter Router. To see how this works, I created this yummy looking cupcakes page where I have all these cupcakes available to buy. Now in an ideal world, I don't want somebody to just buy the cupcake from here. I want them to be able to navigate to the cupcake page so that they can get more information about that cupcake. So I have my React app already set up where I created this with Vite. I have my app.tsx, which just lists out all of my cupcakes on that page. But I also created some other pages, such as my cupcake page, which will have each individual cupcake. I even created an about page, if I can find it here, where it's just going to talk about why I want to sell my cupcakes. Now at the core of it, the application is really only trying to load that one route. So we can see that if I switch these out, I can actually see what those different pages look like. But I want something that can dynamically change these uh, pages out as I load them based on the URL. And while I could probably technically do that by parsing out the URL, dynamically loading each of those components, that's going to be pretty complicated. And I just want something simple that I can throw into my application and just work. So that's where Wouter is gonna come in, where we're gonna be able to install this and get some pretty easy to set up routing. Where if we look at the getting started, really this is all we need to do. We can set up our links and our route, where the links is just gonna give us a way to navigate to those routes, but we can see that when rendering each and every one of those, all we need to do is define the path and define what we wanna actually render. Whether it's just text, we create our component in the spot, or if we actually pass in the component from the separately maintained file. So let's get started with this. I'm gonna take Wouter, I'm going to npm install it in my project, and let's just copy a lot of this inside of our application. We're inside my main.tsx file. I'm gonna go ahead and just paste it there. And what we're doing is we first have these imports. Let me put them out the top, guys. I like to be organized. But we have our new app where I'm gonna just gonna rename that as router. And technically we could probably put this out into its own router.tsx file, but I'm just gonna leave it here for, for simplicity. But what we have here is now where we wanna define all of our routes. And to start, let's actually define out that home page where we're gonna make that just a slash. And instead of rendering this app component directly inside side of this create root element, I'm going to pass my router instead of that app. And then I'm going to specify the component as that app that I'm already importing. So really what this should do right now is just add a link to the top of the page. And it really should just show that current same app that I already had. And back inside the application, we can see just that we have this profile link, which doesn't actually do anything right now because it's not set up to do anything. But we do have our cupcakes page that we still have listed out. So let's actually make this dynamic and start to think about how we can navigate over to that about page. So to start off, let's actually import that about page. So I'm going to uncomment that out. And we can see that we use the same pattern for each and every route where I want to first define my path. I'm going to make that about. And then for the component, of course, I want to include the about page component for what I want rendered out. So what I can do now is instead of this profile link, I'm going to make this slash about, and I'm going to make this go or rather say about, and I might as well make an extra link here to go to the home page, just to make sure we have a way to get back. Now, as soon as we reload the app, we can now see our home and our about links up here, where if I go ahead and click about, we can see that it was pretty instantly reloaded for that new page route, where it tells my charming history of my baking shop, which I just grabbed from ChatGPT. But we can see that again, if we go over to home, we can see it went right back to that other page based off of that route that's being updated inside of the browser URL. Now, since I have Tailwind loaded up inside of this project, I went ahead and just added a few styles in here where it's still not necessarily pretty, but we can see that it at least looks like the application. And this is where we can start to think about how we build the layout of our application, where we have a global nav and where do we want that to sit? How do we want that to look and actually interact with the application? But that's for another day. But let's take this a step further beyond just these static pages that we're changing to, where we have our cupcakes and we wanna make it so that anytime we try to navigate to one of these cupcakes, we're gonna to get to see an individual page for that particular cupcake. So the way that that route component works is you can pass in different patterns. And for our current purpose, we just pass in a simple string for that about page and the home page, where we can see here that we can also have dynamic values in that, where if we pass in something like an ID, we prefix it with this colon to designate it as an ID. And then we get this function that would render where we can dynamically pass in that ID or whatever that dynamic value is into the page component to make sure that it renders. So let's just do that. I'm going to go ahead and copy this route. 
I'm gonna paste it in under my existing routes. And this time I'm gonna make this one cupcakes. And then for each and every one of those IDs, I wanna actually import my cupcake page route that I had already created. So what I'm gonna be doing is creating this component, which is a page component, and I'm gonna be rendering that, but I'm gonna be doing so dynamically by passing in that ID as a prop or as a parameter into that component so I know which one to render. Now inside of my cupcake component, I'm currently importing those cupcakes, but all I'm doing right now for the sake of example is pulling in the very first cupcake. But what I wanna do is dynamically grab the cupcake based off of the ID I'm passing in as a prop. So if the first thing I do is actually destructure that prop, and we know we gotta set up the type to make sure that TypeScript doesn't yell at us, but we're gonna look for this ID inside of our cupcakes. And if we just look at this cupcakes file for a second, all it is is an array where I have all these objects that include the descriptions and you know the title and the ID of each and every one of my cupcakes. So what I'm gonna do is for all those cupcakes, I'm gonna use find and for each of those cupcakes, I'm gonna say if cupcake.id equals ID, that's gonna then be my cupcake. Where then for the rest of the page, I already have that rendering out. So if I have my cupcake, I'm gonna get render the title, the image, the description, even the image in there. I might've said that already. Um, but if it's not, I'm just gonna re render a message saying that we don't have that cupcake. So now we don't currently have these links set up yet. We'll do that in a second, but let's just test that this is working. So I'm gonna go to cupcake slash chocolate. We can see that I was already trying that out before. And if I go to that, we can see that I now have my chocolate cupcake. And if I go to something else such as Funfetti, we can see I get my Funfetti because I'm dynamically changing that ID inside of the route. And then finally, if I go to something that doesn't exist, we can see that we get the message basically saying that that cupcake doesn't actually exist. Now, of course, we don't want to have to manually go to this route every time we want to look at an individual cupcake. So what we want to do is we want to click on this button so that it actually navigates to that cupcake page. Now, as we remember from setting up the links inside of the router, we're now able to define those link components so we get that nice client-side routing when going to the route that we actually want. And one thing to actually note here is we don't actually need these A elements here. That's really only if we want to define specific things for that A tag. If we were just rendering the link as is, we could just simply remove that A tag and it's going to automatically construct that. So let's see what that looks like inside of our actual application. We're going to first import that link component from Wouter. And then down on my button, I'm currently rendering a button and it makes more sense for me to render an actual anchor tag. And we can see that I am adding a class name to this. So I'm going to leave that as is, but we do want to wrap that with the link to make sure that we can get that nice client side routing. But then I'm going to specify the href and I'm going to make that a dynamic value where I'm going to say, I'm going to start with the cupcakes base route. And then I'm going to pass in the ID for each and every one of these cupcakes as it's looping through and rendering so that I can get a URL that's specific to each and every one of those cupcakes. But now when I go back to my page, I can now click through to this buy button and we can see that I now was instantly navigated over to my chocolate cupcake. Or if I wanna go down and choose my vanilla cupcake, we can see that I get my vanilla cupcake rendered from that route. Now, for a lot of purposes, this is gonna be everything that you need where you just wanna simply navigate to some different pages. But if you want to dig a little bit deeper with Wouter, there are a few other options, including to use route router or hook. If you want to do something like transition, this makes it easier for you. There's a lot of different tools for this particular solution to help you be successful for the different routing needs that you have. Now that said, if you do need some more advanced usage from your router, there are some other awesome solutions such as React Router, which comes from the Remix team, where there's also the Tanstack Router that's currently in beta, but it's gonna be a pretty awesome solution from Tanner Lindsley that's gonna help you actually set up those more complicated routes. Having a solid, straightforward router is critical to be able to deliver this multi-page experience, but we might not always need some of the other complicated features that we get from some of the bigger routing solutions. If you want to learn some more interactive ways that you can set up your React app, such as being able to trigger something when you're scrolling, check out my video where I show you how to use Intersection Observer to trigger a little rocket or some kind of animation whenever you hit that element in the page. While you're still here, make sure you hit thumbs up, subscribe, and click that little notification bell to get videos like this straight to your inbox. Thanks for watching.